Video showing police breaking up a fight and it's going viral. Reaction from the late night incident in West Ford and how KCPD is responding. Today there will be a hearing surrounding Secretary of State Chris Kobach. Why one man is objecting his nomination as the GOP candidate for governor in Kansas. And we're already talking about winter wonderland. We'll talk about the search for trees that is going on right here in Missouri to make sure that the governor's mansion is ready for the holiday season. 41 Action News starts now. We're talking about Christmas trees. It is in the 50s yeah. this morning. It felt like fall all weekend. Phenomenal. If you step outside this morning or once you do step outside, it might actually be not crazy to think <laughs> about fall decorations, Christmas trees, as we're talking about. Like right, Lindsay Anderson? Because this is something we're finally getting to experience a little bit this morning. Exactly. Maybe even a sweater. A sweater. I know you guys made fun of me earlier saying you need a sweater, but in the 50s, that was I July. think you're right. <laughs> I know. I know. But still, sweater may be needed out there this morning as we're in the lower middle 50s outside in Kansas City. Some of us are also noting some patchy fog out there, so we might notice a bit of a haze in the distance just past Kaufman and Arrowhead. We're at 58 degrees at KCI and Lee Summit, 52 in Lawrence, and 56 degrees in Overland Park. This is cooler than average. We're, we don't normally see temperatures like these for the start of September. So our latest visibility map has some dense locations located in eastern Kansas from Topeka, Lawrence into Ottawa. So far, so good within the 435 loop, but already noticing some patchy fog in central and western Missouri from Marshall, Warrensburg, and Clinton. So just a heads up, it potentially could slow you down through about 8 or 9 a.m. Then we'll notice a lot of sunshine outside and our temperatures climbing into the upper 70s. So a day very similar to yesterday with a little more blue sky. All right, let's send it over to Jay to get a check on the roads. How are they looking out there this morning? Dry and, and nice yes. out there. Yes. Oh, we will take those dry roads. Last week we just had a mess out there, but this morning we do have a stalled vehicle. I can kind of see that here. Southbound lanes of I-435. This is on the Missouri side of 435 loop, just past I-70. So we're just a little bit further south of I-70 there. Off to the right shoulder of the roadway, not really blocking any lanes or slowing things down for us, but something that we'll watch. Looks like MoDOT is out there trying to help them out a little bit for us. Uh, also, I-70 looking good here. This is at Woodland. No real problems out there. Eastbound, westbound lanes moving along just fine green all the way through even where that salt vehicle is right through this area no problems out there not causing a slowdown guys Jade, thank you. 6.02 this morning. Right now, a controversial video going viral online that has some questioning a Kansas City police officer. Yeah, this video shows the officer breaking up a fight between two women in Westport over the weekend. 41 Action News reporter Sarah Blake talked to the police and the person who shot the video. By now, thousands of people have seen this video recorded off someone's phone Saturday night in Westport. Two girls who appear to have been in a fight Friends in Kansas City police officers trying to separate them. This part is what many are talking about. This is another video from someone recording across the street showing a different vantage point. Over a thousand people have commented on Facebook, some saying what this officer did was wrong, and some saying what he did wasn't a big deal. It just looked very dramatic from that vantage point. He's bigger, he brings his hand down, they're low. It didn't look bad, but that's not what happened. From our angle, he just broke the fight up. The people who recorded the videos didn't want to be on camera, but we talked to a witness who says she and her friends saw the whole thing while sitting on a patio. She says one girl in the video was grabbing the other's hair. It broke up a fight where they could have potentially really hurt each other. The Kansas City Police Department responded with this statement. A spokesperson said, quote, some of the methods officers train in include strikes to release grasps of objects or other people. They went on to say they're always looking to keep people safe and are investigating the situation. Sarah Plake, 41 Action News Today. 6.04 this morning, and a man is in custody after an hours-long standoff. Last night, officers showed up to a home near 12th in Colorado on reports of a person with a gun. During all of this, police had to evacuate people from neighboring apartments. So I exit my, uh, the door to my room, and I come outside, and I see a whole bunch of police just standing uh, across in the hall uh, with guns ready. And so I go back inside of my apartment. It tells me that he wants to help me out of the window because there's a man with a gun across from my apartment. Police were able to take that suspect into custody peacefully just before 10 o'clock last night. 
Also developing this morning, a Dallas police officer faces manslaughter charges. That's right. She's accused of fatally shooting a man in his apartment after mistaking it for her own apartment. Amber Geiger was released from jail last night after posting $300,000 bond. She was off duty when she shot Botham Shemjan inside his apartment last week. The 26-year-old was a native of the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. He was unarmed. Geiger has been on the Dallas police force for four years. All right, a new challenge for the Kansas Republican nominee for governor, Chris Kobach. Yep, today the State Objections Board will hear a challenge to his nomination, along with challenges to two other candidates for office. 41 Action News reporter Ray Daniel is live. Ray, break this down for us. Well, Lindsay, you know, the winner for the Republican nominee for governor definitely took some time. We're here at the Johnson County Elections Office where we had those delays. And, you know, Chris Kobach narrowly defeated the current governor, Jeff Collier, in a tight race for that Republican nomination. Now, Davis Hammett is challenging the outcome, saying hundreds of legal ballots were not counted in the Republican primary race. His objection asked for the results to be decertified and basically recounted. Secretary of State Chris Kobach has recused himself from the hearing. And Kobach is not the only one whose results were challenged. Today's hearing also includes Lieutenant Governor nominee Wink Hartman and a Republican candidate in the 26th District House race, Adam Thomas. The state board will look over objections at 1 o'clock today in Topeka, Kansas. Live in Johnson County, Ray Daniel, 41 Action News Today. Ray, thank you. Today, Missouri lawmakers head back to Jefferson City for a special session. One of the main focuses, STEM and computer science opportunities for students in Missouri. That session runs through the 14th of this month. All right, it's never too soon to think about Christmas. Maybe not never. In fact, the Missouri <laughs> governor already on the hunt for a Christmas tree. Yep, he's asking Missourians to nominate options from the Show Me State to use as a Christmas tree outside the governor's mansion this year. Fort Wayne Action News reporter Charlie Keegan joins us breaking down the criteria <laughs> on the governor's list. A couple things you need here, right, Charlie? Exactly. They're looking for very specific trees, either a white pine or a Norway spruce or even maybe a red cedar. That's what we're standing in front of right here. This could make for a nice Christmas tree. The governor wants something that's native to the state of Missouri to put out there outside of the governor's mansion this holiday season. Wants something that's real nice. It's the Department of Conservation here in Missouri that puts on this um, program every year to kind of collect nominations and then choose a tree that'll be used during the Christmas season. They are outside of the governor's mansion in Jefferson City. Although they're looking for a tree that has to come down for one reason or another. They don't want to just cut down a perfectly good tree and use it as a decoration for a month or two. They want uh, it's going to serve a purpose. And actually, in 2016, they picked a tree from Independence. It had just simply gotten too big for the yard where it was there in Independence. He got a free removal and a letter from the governor thanking him. And, uh, you know, the ability to tell the neighbors, hey, that tree's in the mansion front yard for Christmas. So it's a good win-win situation. So if you have a tree, maybe like this one, that could earn some of those bragging rights and you want to nominate it to be the Christmas tree here for the state of Missouri, well, you have until October 10th to do so. We have the information on how you can email that nomination up on our website, kshb.com. Just look under the web links tab. And then if you're curious, over in Kansas, they actually have a uh, nursery association, tree growers association that donates a tree to go inside the governor's mansion there in Topeka. For now, reporting live in Kansas City, Missouri, I'm Charlie Keegan, 41 Action News Today. Hill finds an opening. Tyreek Hill to the outside. Hill, blazing speed. Tyreek Hill electrifying. There it is. Bye. Yep. In the end zone. He's so fast. <laughs> Good start for the season for Chiefs Kingdom. That video was the first time they touched the ball yesterday. We hear it all the time. Hard to beat a team three times in a row. What about nine times in a row? Team came out right off the bat really strong. Look at that. Whoop. Gone. Tyreek Hill showing he's in it to win it this year. He'll put 14 <laughs> points on the board in the first quarter. That first play you saw in the highlight was a punt return. Second quarter, Harrison Butker added to the score with a 46-yard field goal. 17-12 at the half. And then look at this. Second half, easiest looking touchdown ever. DeAnthony Thomas takes one home. Anthony Sherman also picking up a nice shot that we I think we have a highlight of. There's Tyreek Hill scoring his third touchdown of the day. Big day. A botched Chargers punt in the fourth quarter made it for an easy touchdown. Chiefs won 38-28. Big game. Every time Pat stepped into the huddle, he's very confident. You know what I'm saying? And the play call, and he was like, okay, guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
let's drive this ball down their throat. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, as receivers, tight ends, offensive line, we'd be like, okay, we got a great leader in our, in our huddle. <laughs> they scored 38 points. Travis Kelsey had one catch. Crazy. Isn't that crazy? The team has next week to focus on. They'll take on the Steelers in Pittsburgh next Sunday at noon. Whoever has Tyreek Hill on their fantasy football team oh my gosh. having a good day. Yeah. Woo! They are happy all season long, I think. Um, out there today, feeling like fall once again, as we'll see highs in the upper 70s. 78 degrees at high temperature Kansas City, 76 in Lawrence, 78 in Warrensburg and Maryville, 75. Overnight temperatures, not as cool as this morning, but we're still running in the 50s for many of us to start off tomorrow. So today, tomorrow, Wednesday, in fact, into this upcoming weekend, things are dry and and sunny, so looking good to wash the car. Quite a difference from our weather story last week, as we'll notice a lot more blue sky. Jade. We do have some construction to talk about over the weekend. KDOT crews have closed one of the ramps there in Johnson County. This is the ramp from Antioch Road to I-435 westbound. So Antioch to westbound I-435. That's going to remain closed for the next three weeks, which looks like it'll go until the end of this month. Uh, so if this is a route that you usually take, make sure that you are really preparing for that this morning, that you're going to have to take a different route into work. Lindsay. All right, Jade, thank you. Ford talking back and taking on President and Donald Trump. Yep, and why the company's plans for future manufacturing are under an international microscope this morning. And the southeast prepping for Hurricane Florence as it makes its way, its way towards the Carolinas when that storm is expected to make landfall. Coming up. 611 this morning. You see the temperature? It is 57 degrees. Wow, we're just a couple weeks from fall. You're watching <laughs> 41 Action News. Clear, complete coverage. Good morning, everyone. Taking a live look at I-70 there near the stadiums. Big game for the Chiefs yesterday. What a what an exciting game that was. 614 this morning, 57 degrees. Definitely feeling more like fall. That's coming up here soon, too. Taking a live look at I-70. These are your westbound lanes right here, just east of Blue Ridge Cutoff. You can see we do have a stalled vehicle there. We do have some help there as well, but it is partially blocking that right lane of roadway. So we have a couple left lanes still open. Lots of traffic moving through this area, so we might notice a little bit of a slowdown if you are heading on those westbound lanes here in the next few minutes or so. Then heading to I-435, not too far from there, southbound lanes just past I-70. We had a stalled vehicle out here a little bit earlier. That has cleared. No problems out there right now. Southbound and northbound lanes both look good. Your drive times if you're heading out of the city, no problem. 17 minutes to Olathe on southbound 35, northbound 35 to Liberty, 11 minutes, and downtown to Grandview right now on 71 High Highway, sitting at 15 minutes. All right, thank you. After 20 years, CBS longtime executive Les Moonves is stepping down. According to several reports, the move comes as part of a corporate settlement after more women came forward with claims of sexual misconduct towards Moonves. CNN reports Moonves will likely earn around $100 million in the agreement, but he will not get that money until an internal investigation is complete. Ford says it will not be rebuilding the Focus active car in the U.S. despite suggestions from the president. Donald Trump tweeted on Sunday saying, quote, Ford has abruptly killed a plan to sell a Chinese-made small vehicle in the U.S. because of the prospect of higher U.S. tariffs. He added, this is just the beginning. This car can now be built in the U.S.A. and Ford will pay no tariffs. Ford quickly responded saying, it will not be profitable to build the Focus Active in the U.S. given an expected annual sales volume of fewer than 50,000 units. Adding that Ford is proud to employ more American hourly workers and build more vehicles in the U.S. than any other automaker. This morning we're tracking Hurricane Florence and her path. Right now the storm is on track to hit the southeastern coast by Thursday of this week. The shelves and grocery stores look at that. They're near bare residents stocking up on water, other essentials. The National Hurricane Center says Florence has maximum sustained winds of 85 miles per hour already. States of emergency have been declared in Virginia and both Carolinas. Whatever happens, we're going to have a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Even if uh, the hurricane goes uh, farther north and is anticipated in, in this graphic, we're still going to have a lot of water and a lot of wind. So what that means is we need to be prepared. The University of North Carolina at Wilmington is also encouraging students to leave campus this week for a safer location. Okay, take a look at a water spout on the East Coast. Wow, happened Sunday in Virginia along Chesapeake Bay. A water spout is when a whirlwind occurs over a body of water that forms a rotating column of water and spray, and it looks incredible in this video. Big, too. 
I've always wanted to see one of those in person. So pretty amazing footage there in Virginia. Here's a view of the Atlantic Basin of what peak season of hurricane season looks like. We have Hurricane Florence that continues to strengthen early this morning, and this is what we all have our eyes on. Category 2 storm right now with max sustained winds currently at 105 miles per hour is moving slowly at the moment to the west northwest at 9 miles per hour. But look what happens over the next 36 hours. It'll race quickly to the west and intensifies and enters warmer waters in the Atlantic. 145 max sustained winds at uh, 145 miles per hour. It'll get a lot closer to land by Thursday morning and afternoon sustained at category four status. Look what happens as it gets closer to the Carolinas. It'll weaken just a bit to a category three storm still very strong with large storm surge and some major flooding problems expected in the southeast. But check out our cone of uncertainty. There's still some uncertainty in regards to the path of land. Fall. So anywhere from Charleston up through Norfolk, Virginia needs to be well aware of this storm. And in fact, the entire southeast will likely experience some major flooded rains. This is one example of a computer model that is looking at over 10 to 12 inches of rain from North Carolina and to southwest Virginia. So this could lead to some major problems, especially if you have plans to travel out there into early next week. Live picture outside right now in Kansas City. Things are quiet, calm, and cool. We're at 58 degrees out at KCI, 55 South KC, 55 Lee Summit, 56 in Liberty. Meanwhile, Bonner Springs, we're running at 55 degrees. A wider view shows many of us running in the lower middle 50s from Bethany, Chillicothe, Sedalia, Clinton, and Warrensburg. Lawrence, 52 as you get up and around. Patchy dense fog has developed for many of us on the eastern Kansas side and just sneaking into northwest Missouri. Two and a half miles visibility there at St. Joe. Five miles now at KCI. A half a mile visibility in Lawrence. So that's where we're noticing some of the dense locations. So patchy fog may be possible on that school day planner as you drop kids off at school. Otherwise, feeling pretty pleasant in the upper 50s. Might want an extra layer on top of your clothes today. 73 degrees expected for the lunch hour. Perfect to bring your lunch outside today. The wind remains light and we get up to 78 by 4 p.m. Here are your high temperatures across the board, getting to 80 downtown, 75 in Bethany, 77 in, in Sedalia, and 76 degrees. High temperature Garnett and to Pleasanton. If you have tickets this evening to go to Kaufman, looks really great for some baseball weather. 73 degrees, come first pitch at 715, and then heading home later on this evening, we're at 66 as things start to cool down under that clear sky. After today, things start to heat up a bit. We warm into the lower 80s, closer to average for the start of September, and even hotter by this upcoming weekend, 87 degrees forecast on Saturday. Also noticing those overnight temperatures starting to warm up a bit as well into the middle and upper 60s by the end of the week. Jay's here tracking the, the, the roads, the maps out there. I know last week was super oh, rainy. Oh my goodness, wet roads almost every day. We're happy with these dry roads. <laughs> Let's see, Big you change. come back, you bring the dry roads. We appreciate I do what that. I can. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's take a look right now. Wide view of our map, green all the way through. You can see just a little bit of orange right there on I-70. That's where we have a stalled vehicle. Let's zoom in there. Uh, it's on those westbound lanes, kind of close to 40 Highway, uh, right in this general area. And you can see that stalled vehicle kind of pushing people over to the left lanes of traffic. So just that right lane blocked there, causing a little bit of an issue, but really not probably going to slow you down all that much altogether. So your drive times to downtown Kansas City, those westbound lanes of I-70, Blue Springs to downtown, still sitting at 18 minutes. We're not seeing much of a slowdown there at all. Olathe to downtown, northbound lanes of I-35, 18 minutes, 11 minutes, Liberty to downtown on southbound 35. All right, thank you. Hey, thank you. A new approach in battling Lyme disease. And the solution one doctor says could be 80% effective in preventing the disease. Welcome back. 624 this morning. Lyme disease can be truly debilitating. According to the CDC, there are close to 300,000 new infections every year. So why is there no vaccine for that? Well, a doctor from Yale University School of Medicine says he was on a team that created one back in the early 90s, but it was eventually pulled from the market. He says it was 80% effective, but there was an outcry of safety concerns. So now he is working on a new type of vaccine that can make the body completely resistant to ticks. 
we can make an animal that is, we call it tick immune. It's, it no longer is susceptible uh, to effective tick bites. Researchers say more testing still needs to be done, but so far they've had success stopping ticks from latching on to smaller animals like guinea pigs. The country's leading pediatricians want all children to be screened for prenatal alcohol exposure. Studies show there's been an increase in fetal alcohol syndrome, which raises the risk of brain and behavioral disorders. While there's no cure, the American Academy of Pediatrics says early intervention can help. Parenting strategies, educational services, and changes in the home environment have been shown to improve outcomes for children and their families. Pumpkin spice mania in full force already spreading from food and drinks to home goods. It's everywhere. Has it gone too far? The latest <laughs> items to hit the market with the pumpkin spice twist. Never has never gone too far. All right, westbound lanes of I-70, pretty slow right now. We do have a crash, or not a crash, a stalled vehicle out there blocking kind of a portion of the right lane of the roadway right before you get to the stadiums there in Kansas City, Missouri. So we'll have another check of that coming up next on 41 Action News. Today, tributes and memorials preparing for the anniversary of September 11th. Spots in the Kansas City area where you can pay tribute to the victims of the 2001 terrorist attack. Right now, the monthly costs of owning a home are going up. Why experts say renting may be a better option. Let's take a live look at Westbound I-70. This is near 40 Highway. We are already seeing a backup at 6.30 this morning. Let's get to Jade. What's going on? Yeah, a little early to be wanting to see anything like this. That's for sure. So we're in Kansas City, Missouri, close to Independence as well, kind of like right there on the line. Um, and the westbound lanes, you can see how slow we're going. We have a stalled vehicle up ahead. It's just partially blocking that right lane. So we're pushing everybody over to those two left lanes. And it's also kind of in a construction zone. So just a little bit slow through that area. Here's a better look at that stalled vehicle. We do have help out there on the way as well. But look at that slowdown already for Forming. Back to Nolan Road right now. We are going about 24 miles per hour through that stretch as you're heading right towards there's Arrowhead and kind of see that little red dot and the K and I-435. So just popped up a little bit of stop and go on the map as well. Not a good sign this early in the morning. Let's send it over to Lindsay Anderson. At least we have some dry roads out there. That certainly helps matters as Jade, but we are watching some visibility concerns for some of us this morning. Some dense fog located in eastern Kansas from Hiawatha that sneaks into Atchison, Kansas, potentially to St. Joseph through Lawrence and Ottawa, Kansas, where visibility is ranging between a quarter of a mile up to one mile. So that may slow you down out there. Some patchy fog also reported in central and western Missouri. So heads up on that. 435 loop doing okay so far. In fact, we can see the roads, the plaza clearly today. Our temperatures are running in the middle and upper 50s. We do have a yellow light for that patchy fog potential till about 8 a.m. Then by 9 o'clock, the fog will dissipate. We'll notice a lot of blue sky and our temperatures starting to warm up as well. We'll get up to 78 degrees for your afternoon high today. 58 degrees later on tonight. So pretty pleasant waking up Tuesday morning. We get a bit warmer, 82 degrees by tomorrow. Even hotter air arrives for this upcoming weekend. And we're also tracking the track of Florence, an active Atlantic basin coming up. Lindsay, thank you. 631 this morning. Tomorrow marks the 17th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. And a new memorial to honor the passengers and crew members killed when a hijacked plane was crashed in that Pennsylvania field is now in place. Now the Tower of Voices, which includes wind chimes to honor the 40 victims, was dedicated yesterday. The former governor of Pennsylvania and the nation's first Homeland Security Secretary spoke about the heroes aboard United Airlines Flight 93. There was a plane it began to veer off course in speed toward the U.S. Capitol. It didn't reach its target because on board were 40 extraordinary people who brought together by chance stood up against evil. They fought for the families they loved, for people they never knew and for freedoms they had cherished. Just incredible what they did. Three other hijacked planes were crashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Nearly 3,000 people died in that attack. The president and first lady will attend an anniversary event at that Pennsylvania site tomorrow. 
Local firefighters held the annual memorial stair climb to honor the victims of the 9-11 attacks over the weekend. Now, hundreds of people took part in the event in downtown Kansas City on Sunday. They raised more than $70,000. That's by far the most they've raised since starting this event eight years ago. This group went up 110 stories, the same as the Twin Towers, with at least 50 pounds of equipment on their back. It's tough. I mean, it's it's a lot to think about, especially for those guys doing it that day. They just didn't climb the towers. They have to climb the towers and then go into rescue mode, go into firefighter mode. The money goes towards the surviving spouse and family endowment. Tomorrow, two spotlights will be turned on in Overland Park at the 9-11 Memorial there. An anonymous donor paid for the two light beams to symbolize the Twin Towers. The lights will be turned on tonight and remain turned on throughout the night. Now, the public is welcome to visit the 9-11 Memorial for several moments of silence throughout the day. And tomorrow, the city of Smithville will be dedicating a memorial remembering the World Trade Center as well. An artifact from the World Trade Center will be at the center of the display. The Smithville American Legion obtained this three years ago from New York. It's a piece of steel, weighs a half ton. It's 23 feet long. The dedication ceremony is at 746 tomorrow morning. That's the time the first plane hit the tower back in 2001. 634, a new video into the live desk this morning of a deadly crash in Grandview involving a motorcycle and an SUV. This happened just before 10 last night near Blue Ridge Boulevard and Blue Ridge Circle. Officers say when they arrived, they found a motorcycle rider dead and the driver of the SUV gone. Grandview detectives are investigating. If you've got any information about what happened, you're asked to contact Crime Stoppers. Homeownership has historically been a good way to accumulate wealth, but that might be changing at least for right now. New research firm Realdar.com shows the monthly cost of owning one has jumped 14% just in the last year. Owning a home is kind of like owning a money pit. You never know what you're going to be paying for next. If you take the money you save by renting and reinvest it, maybe into the stock market or into an income property, you may make more money than just watching the equity in a home you own grow. So come That's on. what experts say right now. You might hold off on buying and just rent. A big part of this, home prices need to settle a little bit. Despite the rise in so-called cryptocurrencies, mobile wallets, and other forms of online payments, there's still no substitute for cash. According to experts, coins and paper money alive and well, and people still prefer to use them. In fact, 42 billion notes with a value of $1.7 trillion are currently in circulation. That's the most in American history. From 2008 to 2016, the volume of currency has increased by 43%. That's surprising. All right, 6.35 this morning. September really kicks off pumpkin spice season. Yep. But the trend that used to just be all about the lattes, that has now spread to just dozens of other things. Yeah, you've walked down the grocery store aisles. You've seen it. Consumer reporter John Matteris looks into whether it's gone too far so you don't waste your money. Has the pumpkin spice craze gone too far? The 15-year-old fall trend that started with Starbucks coffee has now expanded into so many other things, leaving many consumers saying, when's enough enough? The three words, pumpkin spice latte, are enough to get some people crazy with excitement every September. You think it's a little early for starting pumpkin spice? Uh, no, no. <laughs> no. I wish we could have it all year long, actually. <laughs> There's something about Starbucks' annual rollout that says fall is here, but the hashtag PSL has spread to much more than coffee. You can now get pumpkin spice donuts, breakfast cereal like Cheerios, Life and Mini Wheats, pretzels, energy bars, almonds, even pumpkin spice Oreos. But from the Doesn't That Stink file, people taking PSL a little too far. A deodorant unveiled last year will make your armpits smell like pumpkin spice. Put that together with pumpkin spice body lotion and you'll smell like latte everywhere you go. Lose some friends and you'll say, doesn't that stink? It might be a case where a little is good, but too much can be too much. If pumpkin spice is not your thing, the good news is it's gone after Thanksgiving, though I hope you like peppermint mocha. As always, don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris, 41 Action News. Hashtag PSL could be needed for this morning. I mean, it's cool out there as we're noticing those temperatures in the middle and upper 50s on your bus stop forecast. Watch out for some patchy fog. Otherwise, kids heading home today will be beautiful. 78 degrees later on this afternoon. And that's all vehicle on I-70. Those westbound lanes right there near Blue Ridge Boulevard has cleared finally, but we are still very slow in those westbound lanes, almost all the way back to I-470. 
So going to be a little bit slower to get through there this morning. We'll keep you updated all morning long right here on 41 Action News. Welcome back 641 everyone and the sun's slowly trying to come up. It'll be up here in about 10 minutes or so. We're noticing some patchy fog in places as well where visibility is less than a mile in eastern Kansas. The 435 loop doing okay at the moment. As you can see I 70 Kaufman Arrowhead is doing okay with the visibility. 52 degrees Warrensburg 52 Marshall and Harrisonville we're at 55 degrees and then those afternoon highs will climb into the 70s today guys. All right, Lindsay, thank you. The last time the Kansas Jayhawks won a football game away from home, Patrick Mahomes was still in middle school in Texas. That was, of course, before this weekend when KU finally put an end to that horrible streak. They snapped a 46-game road losing streak to beat Central Michigan 31-7. to that had to feel good. This year, the Jayhawks might also have a star running back on their hands. Freshman Puka Williams rushed for 125 yards and two touchdowns with authority. Look at that. Okay, not the same luck for K-State over the weekend. Tough game Saturday. The Wildcats took on a top 25 team, Mississippi State. But the same things plagued them against FSC South Dakota, an offense that just struggles to move the ball. You know, obviously, you look, uh, you just look at the numbers. I mean, it, uh, we've scored uh, in the first three quarters of each ball game. That's six quarters. We've gotten six points on the board, and that was in the last, you know, whatever it is, two and a half minutes of the third quarter today. So, you know, we're not starting very well. And now for Missouri, we're tracking Drew Locke and his future. He will be a pro soon. Before that, he's got a senior season. So far, pretty good. 687 yards, eight touchdown, no picks in two games. Whew. This time last year, he had 766 yards and eight touchdowns, but he had three interceptions, so he's cleaning it up a little bit over there for the Tigers. Wow. I like that. An officer making a difference in one family's journey home. Yeah, how the Kearney police officer helped the stranded family of seven get back on the road. And the governor of Missouri is looking for a Christmas tree. Could you have the one that could make its mark outside of the governor's mansion this holiday season? Well, I'll tell you what Mike Parson is looking for coming up. 646 this morning, a new challenge for the Kansas Republican nominee for governor, Chris Kobach. Yeah, today, the state objections board will hear a challenge to his nomination, along with challenges for two other candidates for office in Kansas. 41 Action News reporter Ray Daniel is live to break this down for us, right? Well, Lindsay and Taylor, we know that the winner of the Republican nominee for governor definitely took some time. We're here at the Johnson County Election Office, where that was part of the reason why it took so long, because of those delays here at the election office. Now, Secretary of State Chris Kobach defeated current Governor Jeff Collier by 343 votes in the primary. Now, activist Davis Hammett is challenging that outcome. He filed an objection stating hundreds of legal ballots were not counted in the Republican primary race. The state objections board will hear objections to nominations today. Kobach has recused himself from this hearing. Now, these objection nominations include not only the Secretary of State, but Lieutenant Governor nominee Wink Hartman and a Republican candidate in the 26th District House race, Adam Thomas. Now, the objection asked those ballots be unsealed and counted. The board will hear those at 1 o'clock today in Topeka, Kansas. Live in Johnson County, Ray Daniel, 41 Action News today. Great, thank you. In a developing story this morning, a controversial video going viral online has some questioning how a Kansas City police officer broke up a fight between two women in Westport. By now, thousands of people have seen that video. Yeah, there's mixed reactions about how the officer handled exactly what happened there. So two girls appear to be in a fight. You see the friends and Kansas City police officers trying to separate them. We talked to a woman who was in Westport that night and who saw the whole thing. It just looked very dramatic from that vantage point. He's bigger, he brings his hand down, they're low. It doesn't look bad, but that's not what happened. From our angle, he just broke the fight up. A spokesperson with the Kansas City Police Department sent us a statement saying, quote, some of the methods officers train in include strikes to release grasps of objects or other people, adding that the department is investigating the situation. After hearing about a stranded family of seven, a Kearney police officer stepped in to help. Officer David Parker got the family to a hotel after their car broke down, but he didn't stop there. He reached out to local organizations about getting them food and bus tickets back home. And listen to this, Parker's wife also stepped in after he told her he was going to get the family fast food for dinner. 
I was more or less told you're not feeding babies Taco Bell for supper. Um, so we, we talked about doing talked about doing a couple different things. We were talking about doing lasagna for supper that night anyway, so I just had her get more stuff and some uh, disposable pans and brought food down. How sweet is that? The family was on their way from Texas to Wisconsin, but Officer Parker says they actually told him they ran into a number of issues, including somebody scamming them. The family is back in Wisconsin now. that better? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> a little bit better, Taylor says. All right, 649 now. We're looking a little bit better on I-70. Westbound lane, still a little bit slow in some areas, but we did clear up that salt vehicle up ahead, kind of close to the stadiums, and that has really hurt, helped, helped us out a lot. So this is right past Nolan Road. You can still see a little bit of that stop and go out there, and that certainly is still the case. Right there near I-470 as you're heading towards, say, Chrysler, heading towards the stadiums. We just have a little bit of a slowdown through that area. Wide view of our map shows a couple of other small slowdowns. Not a lot of stop and go out there right now. No accidents that we're seeing either. Your drive times to downtown maybe slowing down just a little bit. Uh, we're sitting at about 14 minutes Liberty to downtown on southbound 35. Uh, look at that though. 22 minutes Blue Springs to downtown. Those westbound lanes of I-70. So we are a little bit slow still on those westbound lanes as we were talking about. Let's send it over to Lindsay Anderson with a look at that forecast. All right. Thank you so much, Jade. It's 6.50 now and yesterday it was great football weather to sit back and enjoy. We're at 76 degrees out there for the high temperature and today we're expecting some similar conditions just with more sunshine. Look at the low temperature though. The average low temperature at 60 degrees this morning. We are just below average on that 58 degrees currently at KCI with our dew point in the middle 50s, which means we might notice some patchy fog out there along with calm winds and a clear sky. Perfect ingredients setting up for some fog and low visibility in places. 52 degrees current temperature at KCR in Lawrence, 52 in Chillicothe, 54 in Clinton. In Pleasanton, we're running at 58 degrees. St. Joe, 52 and 57 in Maryville. Here's the latest visibilities on our map with very dense fog located in Ottawa, less than a half a mile located there. Six miles visibility in Lawrence, but the farther west you travel along I-70, closer to Topeka, might notice some dense locations, and that extends into high Iowa as well. St. Joe visibility down to three miles. Noticing some patchy conditions there in Warrensburg and Clinton as well. So you might run into that early today. Otherwise, any of the fog out there will dissipate by 8 or 9 a.m. And then we're looking at abundant sunshine into the day. 74 degrees for the lunch hour, 78 by 3 p.m. So perfect anytime you want to eat outside today. Our winds staying light out of the southeast. Temperatures downtown might sneak into the low 80s. Otherwise, everyone else will be in the 70s. 77 in Cameron for that high temperature, 78 in Lawrence, 77 St. Joseph and Harrisonville will notice that high temperature of 77 degrees. Average high for early September is 82. So you're noticing today cooler than average, but then we start to warm right up into the lower middle 80s by the end of the week, closer to average for early September. Now let's focus on Hurricane Florence because this is a big talker, a big concern for the southeastern coast. Current Currently, a category two storm, max sustained winds at 105 miles per hour, slowly moving to the west northwest at nine miles per hour. Look what happens though in the next 36 hours. It'll quickly zoom to the west and strengthen as it enters warm waters in the Atlantic Basin. 145 mile per hour sustained winds makes it a category four storm Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday as it gets closer to the coast. Now look what happens with the coast a cone of uncertainty. It extends from Charleston, South Carolina through the outer banks of North Carolina into Norfolk. So there's still some uncertainty as far as where the landfall is. This track shifting a little bit more to the north. So anywhere from South Carolina to Virginia needs to be well aware of this storm potentially a major hurricane as it makes landfall, high storm surge, major flooding concerns as that storm will linger across the southeastern states through the middle part of next week, which means upwards 10, 12 inches of rain may be possible. Here in the nation's midsection in Kansas City, things are very quiet, dry and sunny. Look at that seven day forecast. We start to warm up by the weekend with highs in the middle and upper 80s. Lindsay, thank you. It is Monday, September 10th.
But we can still talk about Christmas this morning, right? It is in the 50s. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. So let's take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the upcoming holiday season. Yeah, the Missouri governor is asking you to nominate trees he can use as a Christmas tree for outside the governor's mansion this yeah. year. 41 Action News reporter Charlie Keegan learned what the governor is looking for. Charlie, Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh, Merry Christmas to you, Taylor. The governor has his eye on the holiday here a little early, of course. He's looking for a 40-foot tall evergreen tree to put outside the governor's mansion. Something like this, a red cedar or maybe a white pine, even a, 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 a Norway spruce. Something that is native to Missouri that it can display proudly come the Christmas season. Now, from now until October 10th, the Missouri Department of Conservation is collecting nominations for a tree that is suitable to go out there on the governor's front yard there in Jefferson City. They're looking for a tree that's kind of near the end of its lifetime, you know, or one that has to be removed for construction type of reasons. Uh, they don't want to just tear one down for the tree specifically. But if your tree meets those criteria, well, then the state will come and remove it for free and transport it over to Jefferson City in time for the holiday. And anyway, they want that tree taken out and removed, and this is a way to recycle it or give it another at least a big going out party at the end of its lifespan so we, other people can enjoy it too. So if you're looking at the tree in your backyard, you say, well, it looks like a cedar tree, but not 100% sure. Well, there's apps for that now that can help you identify the tree. This is Google Lens, and we were messing with it earlier, just kind of pointing up at the leaves here, and you take a picture, and it looks for results, and then comes up with a cedar redwood. It said, uh, yeah, red cedar earlier. So there's some kinks in there, but it definitely gives you a, an idea to point you in the right direction. And if you want to nominate your tree for the governor's consideration, well, we have information about how you can do that up on the web links page of our website, kshb.com. Reporting live in Kansas City, Missouri, I'm Charlie Keegan, 41 Action News Today. I love talking Christmas trees, pumpkin spice, and Absolutely. football season. It's all back. Mm -hmm. Amazing game yesterday. The Chiefs yeah. showed us they're sure ready for the season. Yeah, the team came out strong right off the first time they touched the ball. Tyreek Hill showing he has it in it to win it this year. First touch the ball. Watch him. Hill puts 14 points on the board. First quarter. There he goes. Nobody's catching that guy. Nobody. Second quarter, Harrison Bucker added to the score. 46-yard field goal. 17-2 Chiefs at half. Look at that. Second half, easiest looking touchdown ever. D'Anthony Thomas takes one home. That's like Anthony dancing. Sherman scored with a beautiful ball. And then Tyree Kill again scored his third touchdown of the day. That one was easy, too. A botched Chargers punt in the fourth quarter. That makes that an easy touchdown. Yep. Chiefs take this 38-28. This was a fun one to watch. They looked so good. This was not even stressful. No. You're just like, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> like ball to Tyreek, you know what's going to happen. It's exactly right. Exactly, he looks like he's you know? going to be the outlet. For, I mean, because we talked about yesterday and earlier today, Travis Kelsey, so big last year, had one catch yesterday. They still, still scored Talented 38 guy. points. guy. Sure. It's good to have. They have lots of options. A deep bench. That's yes. exactly right. Good things. Good things to come this season for sure. So this week, Today, fantastic mm -hmm. out there. Seven day forecast looking quite different from last week as we're looking at a lot of sunshine outside and our temperatures slowly climbing back into the middle 80s by the end of the week. Wow. Yeah. Can't beat that. I know. It's yeah. good. New, and we love these dry roads. Uh, not seeing too much of an issue. Kind of look maybe like a little bit of fog in this area, but not really yeah. that bad. I 35 is Santa Fe Street. This is in Olathe, Kansas. No problems there. Still pretty slow on I 70. Those westbound lanes is at least Summit Road, so right there in Independence. We had some issues up ahead. Those have cleared, but still slow. All right. We'll see you on 38th the spot in three minutes. Have a great day.